Hi and welcome everyone to our 76th episode of The Little Inside. Surprisingly, my name is still Toby. And this week I'm going to talk a little bit about presence as the direct path. So let's get started right now after the intro. When talking about practicing on the spiritual path, there is really just only ever one moment in which we can really do something. So whether it is trying to be more kind or uh, letting go of suffering and pain or um, cultivating uh, stillness in the mind or something like that, you can only ever do that right now. So this is the domain of spiritual practice. But not only that, I would argue, actually, this is the domain of action. This is the only time where we can actually do something. Everything else is just pondering in our heads. It's kind of a preparation for what we can do concerning the future. Or it's just uh, dwelling in memories of what we did in the past. So it's kind of, you can't really do anything about the things that are happening in 10 minutes. You can't do anything about it right now. What you can do, however, is you can do something right now. And by that, you will influence the course of events so that um, what you will do in 10 minutes will be based on what you are doing right now. So the only way really to change the course of events of your life, like if you want to have a better future or uh, you want to undo mistakes that you did in the past or whatever it is, however you want to frame it, you can only ever do so right now by taking one step at a time and one skillful action at a time. So that's really all we can ever work with is this moment, this present moment. As most of you already know, the past is something that's already gone. It's a very characteristic of the past. It is something that has passed. It's gone. It's finished. It's dead already. It might still exist as a memory in your mind, like pictures, images, feelings, certain thoughts, stories. That might still be there, but it's a memory that is existing in the now. And that memory is like a photograph. It's not the real place. It's a photograph of the place. So if I show you guys a photograph of me being in Phuket, uh, then, then I can only just show you that photograph. And if I show you that photograph somewhere else, like let's say in France, then you see that photograph of me being in Phuket right here, right now. But that has nothing to do with me being in Phuket. It's just a photograph of me being in Phuket. So it's not the actual living experience of being in Phuket right here, right now. In the same way, when we think about our past, it's kind of just like sorting through photographs. And um, of course, sorting through photographs uh, can be quite nice. You have your memories, you have nice feelings, you have pleasurable feelings when you think for the good old times and so forth. Or maybe you have bad feelings of the, all the bad things you did before in your past. That is all possible, but it is based on just that photograph in our heads, that faculty of memory in our minds. In a similar way, it's for the future. Very often we take our past experience into consideration and then project them into the future. So we kind of fear that certain things will happen to us because they happened to us before. So we already know what could happen. Uh, we've read about it. We've made an experience in our life. So we project that into the future and then feel scared of the future. Or we look forward to a future event and all that. But it's still all based on just mental projections, on just images and thoughts in our head. So it is not really based on an actual reality. So I'm not saying that you didn't do what you did. But I'm saying that thinking about what you did do is just that. It's thinking about what you did do. And a thought is an image of what you did do. 
it's not really actually what you did do. It's an image of what you did do. And these thoughts um, are also changing. Our memory can change over the years. How we see certain things that we did in the past can change very much. I remember some childhood memories, for example, that I see in a certain light right now. Um, but I'm pretty sure that I didn't experience them like that when I was actually small. So it's my memory is definitely colored by my experiences, by my life experiences. So it's changing over the years. The way we tell stories to each other is about what, what has happened to me in the past. Also, the way the story is told, it changes every time, just ever so slightly. And over the course of a few years, you have a completely different story which is still similar to the original story, but it has changed significantly for most of us. So the past is something that's quite unreliable. The way we think about our past can change, is subject to change, it's not accurate even. It's not entirely accurate. Also, the way we think about the future is very much based on our experiences from the past. So it's very, very difficult to foresee actual future events. We can't foresee future events. We don't even know uh, how we will feel like in 10 minutes because anything might happen. You might get a call, uh, you might get ill, you might have some pain, uh, someone might say something to you and upset you. you. You don't know what's going to happen. So why are we so obsessed mentally with that storyline of our life? Why are we so obsessed with the past and the future? Why are we trying to figure out how we are going to live instead of actually paying more attention to how we are living right now in this moment. The problem with this kind of lifestyle is that many people actually are not living their life. They're constantly in a state mentally preparing for their life. And then there will be this moment when death is right in front of your doorstep. And at this time most people realize as a shock that they haven't really lived. And so that's why we mostly like to push push the topic of death aside because it makes us unpleasantly aware that we are mostly spending time living our life in our head instead of actually living it based on what is real right here, right now. Some people are also very afraid of actually letting go of their future and their past because they're very attached to the thoughts they're harboring in their heads about time, about what's going to happen to them and how it is supposed to happen to them. They're very afraid of actually letting go of these thoughts. Then they say, well, if I'm not thinking about my future, how will I live my life? And so here's how you could live your life, not really being obsessed about the future or the past 24 seven. You could live your life based on what you are doing right now. You're bringing mindfulness, the quality of awareness, into the current present moment action. For example, for me right now, that would be talking. As soon as I become aware and mindful that I'm talking, I notice two things. One, I don't really have to figure out what I'm going to say next. And two, I'm noticing that it still works even though I'm right now observing myself. The talking still goes on because that's the function of being in front of a camera and having a microphone there and uh, doing this kind of little video here for you guys. So that's just the function of this moment. The moment is embodied in that way and me being a part of that moment, I fulfill my function right in that moment. And I can actually comfortably step back inside of myself and observe myself. I can listen to my own words right now. So you see that by abandoning past and future, namely, oh, what, I did, what did I just say? Or what am I going to say? I'm abandoning that. It's not important for me. I'm not, I'm not concerned about what I will say. But I'm aware of what is being said right now in this moment as a part of how this moment you can say embodies itself or manifests itself and it's quite astonishing for me to see that it still works sometimes I drive a car and um, I might be totally lost in my thoughts 
thinking about where I'm going, thinking about where I'm coming from, talking with my wife and so forth. So that there is me going to a, a certain destination, constantly thinking about other things, still arriving at that destination. How did that happen? I didn't even really consciously drive the car. I didn't have to focus. I didn't have to make my feet do what they do. I didn't have to steer consciously. None of that. It all worked. I s stood still at a red light. When it turned green, I, I drove, even though not fully being aware that the light is green and is red and what that means and I have to contemplate, oh God, what does a red light mean? It just automatically is known. Hearing, seeing, feeling, touching, smelling, all that happens automatically. This is nothing that I make happen, actually. So by coming into the present moment, by bringing awareness into the present moment, by doing what I do fully here and now, I'm also bringing quality into this moment. We all know that if you have a good conversation, the conversation is particularly good because uh, the partner in your conversation is actually listening to you. It's a very nice feeling to be fully received in someone else's awareness. That makes a conversation very fulfilling. In other words, there's a lot of quality, a perceived quality in that conversation. A piece of art, a good piece of art. Why is it a good piece of art? Because someone has put in the quality of attention. Now, if I'm talking to you guys while thinking about lunch, I'm constantly thinking about lunch. Hmm, what am I going to have for lunch? Maybe I'm going to have some spaghetti or I'm going to have this, maybe pizza, maybe this, maybe that. And at the same time, I'm giving this talk about being in the present moment. It's very funny. It's inauthentic. It doesn't have any proper impact because it doesn't arise out of presence. And so what's the fear that many people have to come back to that? The fear is that they become dysfunctional mentally, emotionally, physically, when they are present, they, they kind of feel like, oh, then I will be kind of frozen. I'll be uh, spending the rest time of my life as a vegetable. And if my friends will go out at night and they say, hey, Toby, you're coming with us. I'll be just sitting in my room and I'll be like, no, no, because I'm totally present. I'm already here. That's not the case. <laughs> That's not the case. When you're present, you are still responsive to this moment doesn't mean that you somehow get attached to a state of inactivity, right? So within presence, within uh, an acute awareness of what is, it's not only our working place. This is where we do all the spiritual practice. When you're walking, walk. Unite your body and your mind. Unite your awareness and your body, meaning that when you walk, you're consciously walking. You are aware of walking. You're not walking while thinking about um, arriving, right? If that would be the case, then we could say that your walking lacks quality. So for a meditator, actually, everything in life becomes something to train with. Every situation. Someone is in your face. Someone gives you negative feedback or someone is being um, not nice to you, cutting you off on the street. Or All that is coming into the path. It's all something that we're working with here and now. The main thing about this work is to let go, to learn how to let go, to let go of what is unskillful and to let go of suffering to, so that we can surrender or let go into peace, to be at ease, to be free from conditions, to be free from disturbance and tension and stress, right? So I'm not saying that being present renders you ineffective and you can't do anything anymore because you're so present all the time. Some people, they do that actually. They hear this talk about presence and then their mind tries to kind of pretend that it's present. The mind is a great actor. It has heard this great inspiring talk about being present and now it starts to act as if it was present. So it tries to kind of do everything with presence so it walks very slowly and and then when you're asked a question you first of all you're very present you're slowing down and then you, you do all these outer gestures of what you think a present person would do without actual presence it's only pretense 
So we want to have this element of sincerity, of honesty in our practice, which is very important. We're all human beings. We have human emotions. We have human thoughts. It's messy. The idea is not really to get rid of that messiness. The idea is to make it seen so clearly that you see through it. And that can only be cultivated if you are here, if you are present with yourself, if you pay attention to yourself, right? So the most important task for a spiritual practitioner is, I would say, to care right now, meaning to care for yourself, draw up that suffering, draw up that tension, draw up that unsatisfactoriness, draw up everything that, that agitates your mind, your spirit, drop it it's unnecessary to hold things that are painful and let that be a service to the world it's not so much about making sure that the world is free of suffering and that i need to make sure that everyone around me stops suffering it's much more about freeing the world from our own suffering our own misery and that we can only do if we're present if we're actually available for the many, many messages and teachings that life constantly offers us. So this is all that comes to mind for this week. I hope it was in some way useful. If you do have any questions or comments, please write them down in the comment section below. I'm always happy to read your comments, always happy to know that it helps you in some way. And I'm also happy to receive your feedback. If you think that there is something I could do in a better way, maybe more efficiently, maybe talk a little bit less, maybe talk a little bit more, let me know. And uh, so I'm looking forward to see all of you guys again next Wednesday. Wish you a wonderful week full of presents. Take care. Bye-bye.